think um, soccer is, if I'm honest, really insignificant in this week. Um, my thoughts, prayers, and love go out to all of those tragically affected in the Valdi. Um, culturally, that's very different for me, uh, coming from a country where guns don't exist. Um, and as a parent of young children, um, shocked me to the absolute core um, that someone can can do such a horrendous act, um, take away lives of innocent people and, and young children. So, yeah, a really really sad week in terms of um, living in this country um, and the the events that have happened in this country. And yeah makes me think about whether I want to raise my kids here, to be honest. Um, but like I said, as a club, we, we think deeply about all those affected and hope that the simple solution of removing guns um, happens very, very soon. So on to uh, onto soccer, because we have to. Um, yeah, obviously really pleased with the result last weekend, a really difficult place to go. Uh, very difficult in terms of North Carolina and Lexington team. I know they haven't you know, picked up the points they would have, but I thought it was a very disciplined performance from us on the road and great counter-attacking moment for us to get a goal and, and a clean sheet, which is always pleasing. Um, and we're, we're building off that now for the weekend. We'll open it up in person first with any questions. Sure. No, we'll go over to yeah, I think obviously Rich was a real key hire for us. He's obviously been an assistant at Portland, a successful team for many years, understood the drafts, understood the league, um, and has supported us throughout, you know, the expansion draft, the college drafts, and then obviously knowing the league and his wealth of experience in it has been been so helpful so far. How did, how did he come to you? No, it was definitely a decision I was part of. Um, I spoke to him uh, many, many months ago. And obviously, Mark Parsons had, was leaving Portland. I think that potentially left Rich's role, you know, open potentially. I know that he was looking for a change. Um, and we we were open to, to those discussions. And when I spoke to him, the way he sees the game, you know, the discussions we had around the players, he was a, a fit for us. Thanks. Yeah, I think a goal speak for it, don't it? She's leading the line in terms of goals scored in the league. Um, bringing someone of that calibre, world-class calibre, to come in and lead the front line has been invaluable for us. You know, she's she's a proven winner. You know, she's done it at World Cups. She's done it at the very highest level. So to be able to bring a player like that into our locker room, with, we are a very young team, has been invaluable for us. Um, we just want to keep her fit, healthy and happy. Uh, playing well and scoring goals. Thanks. Hey. Hey, go ahead. Okay. Um, so I have some thoughts on later in the year, some of the international players are going to be able to look at who might be available to be able to play or anything like that. <laughs> Yeah, we have to plan ahead. That's the nature of this league, is that we play through FIFA windows. So we're going to be missing our European players for the vast majority of July. Uh, we're going to be missing our national team players um, for periods of June and July. So we have to plan ahead. But that's why we've got a, a deep roster. We're still looking to potentially sign a couple more. We also know that we'll probably need some national team replacement players during that window. We've already had some players training with us during this time anyway. So we do plan ahead. Um, we also trust our young players. They're played in. You know, I think we've probably given more minutes to more rookies than any other team. So when the time comes and those players do go away, our players are ready to step in and they're capable. That's 
lead you right into my next question. How with, with so many young players and, and rookies, how do, you, how do you choose your starting lineup and who's going to play for them? I think it's, I always look at what we need to beat the opposition. You know, what are we going to need for this game? What's our formation going to be? What strengths do we need on the pitch? Um, there's moments in the game like last weekend when I choose to bring more experience off the bench rather than a rookie in certain moments when we're, you know, one nil up and we want to manage that game in a particular way. But I trust my young players, you know, they're good enough. Um, and you, you don't find that out until you give them a chance. And we had the Challenge Cup, so we had a great opportunity to give them a chance during that. And they've trained well, they're improving all the time. So, yeah, I, I pick a team that I believe can win the game, but I also know that I'm going to need finishers that can change the game off the bench and have done, you know, regularly for us throughout Challenge Cup and throughout the regular season so far. One more question. Um, you could talk about the physicality and the rest and maybe a comment on, uh, on Turbo and her elbow and her suspension <laughs> and anything of that nature. Yeah, it's a learning lesson for Kelsey. Um, I watched it back and I wasn't surprised she got a ban and she didn't mean it. She's not, the, listen, that's not her character. You know, she needs to learn how to control her body in certain moments, use a, a break in speed to slow down, to not foul. And that's all a learning process for her. She's very committed. You know, she did raise her arm. It wasn't intentional because I know her character, but unfortunately she's raised it too high to try and protect the ball. And she's caught the player in the face in this dangerous play. So, you know, we couldn't argue with the one game ban. Um, she's learning as she goes and, I know she never goes out there intentionally to hurt anybody. Um, and yeah, like it's very difficult for officials. Like I, I've openly criticised and I know that, but these officials turn up on a weekend off the back of a full week's work, you know, and they have children and they have a commitment. So and they make mistakes just as I make mistakes as a head coach, you know, and, you know, maybe I just need to be a bit more lenient and, and, and a bit more patient with the education and with the, with the officials because they're, they're not full-time until we invest more money into the officials then maybe i just need to shut up thank you very much thanks uh tom we'll go to you and then stephanie will follow yeah casey i had a soccer question but then uh i'm going to put that off for a minute to ask you a follow-up on the uh, comments you made about the shooting in texas uh how many children do you have and in, in england uh is there a gun culture or how does it work over there so I've got three children. I've got twins that are seven who are elementary age and I've got a little one who's four and they can go to school safely. They don't have to do shooter practice. And that is something that terrifies me to the core here. Um, and some of the stuff I've seen is absolutely heartbreaking and yeah, it, it has to end and it doesn't end until people in power make a decision that's right. You know, how many people are going to die? How many mass shootings are going to happen? How many lives are going to be lost until a decision is made that, you know, that the answer is not more guns. And it's not police in schools. It's no guns. We don't have guns in England. You know, it's not something we even have to think about. So when something like this happens, it, it does frighten me as a parent. Um, and it, it does make me realise things are very different here. And the soccer question I had related to Seattle, uh, it's a two-part question. Last time, it didn't go very well for you guys. And I'm wondering, if, in retrospect, do you think it was good for you? And the, the second question on that is you had mentioned afterward the hotel area may not have been the best. Will you stay in a different hotel? I'm not saying that's why you lost, but I was just curious. Yeah, I'm not a fan of excuses. So the hotel definitely wasn't the reason we lost. It wasn't a particularly nice area and I don't believe we're staying there this time. I do think as, as hard and difficult as it was to take that first half in Seattle, it was a massive lesson for us that we've took. Um, but we need to make sure it stays as a lesson and we have to start brightly this weekend. Thank you. Thanks. Go ahead, Stephanie. Hi, Coach. Hi. Um, I have two questions. Uh, the first of which is that uh, we've seen pictures of Amira Ali um, training during practice. And can you give us an update on her condition? Is she better than um, she was a few weeks ago? And also, how was Abby Dahlkemper's condition? Because I noticed that she wasn't on the roster. I mean, she wasn't in the lineup last week. And so I was just wondering how she's doing this time around. Well, Amira Ali came on as a game changer last weekend, so she's fine. 
and Abby Dalkamper took a knock the day before we were playing. She was actually due to start against North Carolina. She took a knock and, and she is unavailable. All right, thank you. And I do have one more question. You said that you are looking to add people to the Wave FC. Is there a particular area where you feel the team needs to be reinforced? No, I think we're at 24 contracted players. We can go to 26. So we're always looking. Doesn't mean we'll definitely add. It just means we're looking to add because we've got two spaces that we can fulfill. And obviously during international windows, we're going to need that. All right, that's it. Thank you. Thanks. Jacob, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, hi, Casey. Thanks for taking the time to chat with us. And first and foremost, thank you for your opening statements about uh, Uvalde and, um, and all, all of that. Um, looking towards your opponent's OL reign on Sunday, they are coming off their first win, regular season win on Wednesday. And across that game and uh, last Sunday's game against Washington Spirit, they've combined, they've shot the ball 40 times. Um, so I was just wondering how mindful are you are you and the team in terms of, you know, possibly anticipating, you know, a game where they're going to shoot the ball a lot of times. And then as terms of like, as the saying goes, you know, it only takes one for the floodgates to open. Listen, they're a good team just because they haven't been getting three points. They've created a hell of a lot of chances. I've watched their games. They've been unlucky not to pick up more points. If like you say, they've had a lot of chances on goal, great, a lot of chances. And they got their win on Wednesday. So that will build massive confidence for them. We know that they've got dangerous players. We know we're going to have to be on at our very best defensively. Um, and we know they're a good team. As you know, any team in this league can cause you problems if you, if you aren't organised defensively. And then on the flip side, uh, your team's attacking front, you know, has been able to find the back in that pretty well. But uh, Ola Reigns' defense and their goalkeeper, Fallon Tells Joyce, have been able to kind of contain some uh, pretty solid attacking options. So I guess on the flip side, uh, what's the approach to, um, you know, staying, you know, keeping up uh, your game plan to threaten uh, Ola Reigns' defense? Yeah, listen, they're, they're not conceding many goals at all because they're defensively organized and Laura Harvey's a good coach. You know, so we're going to be have to, have to be at our very best. And when we get those chances, which we know, you know, might not be as many as we, we normally get, um, we have to be ruthless and we have to have a ruthless intent in, in both boxes. You know, that's where, where the games are won and lost. Appreciate it. Thank you much. Thanks. Great. Are there any final questions online? Anyone? Yeah, one last, last question here at the field. You might not be able to address this, but in light of the uh, city's agreement with two waves of... Uh, uh, any rumblings that you can talk about about possibly the wave looking southward? We're looking everywhere. Um, so, yeah, obviously we, we know that there's steep heritage here. Um, so, yeah, we're always looking for talent worldwide, um, and that includes southwards too. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Thank you.